Hi there. Today we're looking at painting this sunset scene. Quite quick, quite easy. Um, lovely bright little sunset. You can do it in whatever colours you want to. So um, don't forget there is the instruction sheet. You can download that. I have done a cheat sheet though. It is better for you to draw it yourself. And the original photograph will be there for you to have a look at so you can work out all the shapes yourselves. Okay, let's get going. Right, so we're looking at this picture as of these um, this sunset here. This is one of the pictures I took when I was away on holiday. And um, I kept taking photographs of this sunset and this loads and loads of boats in the harbour. The trouble when you're doing this, there's all sorts of boats in all sorts of different places. So you can't just take a photograph and copy everything that's there because it gets too busy. So always simplify it. So I've just taken these one, two, three sailing yachts here, just with the sails all furled up there. This little post here, which I quite like, and just translated that onto my um, piece of paper. So I've just drawn out vaguely three little boats in different positions here, just taking the idea of these which are on here, and then just put a bit of background to it. So just about, you know, just over a third of the way up, something like that. Take that little post and put its vaguely hint of where its reflection is, is going to go in and a little bit of shore. So we're going to just work on this. It's fairly quick, really. It's just doing the, um, the sky and its reflection down here um, and then building up the, the other bits onto it. So first of all, we're going to do the sky. And we're going to make up, you can make whatever colours you want to, you can make it with pinks and purples, um, but I'll stick to the colours that I could see here in this picture. There's a bit of cerulean blue, just a bit of pale, pale summery blue just left there in the sky. There's some very pale light colours of, um, they're probably yellow ochre or raw sienna or something like that, just a bit of the yellowy colour. You've got a bit of cadmium red and um, cadmium yellow which gives you this orangey glow and then in between those there's a bit of a purpley colour so I'm just mixing some of those up the purple will be ultramarine blue and Elysian crimson so just make a little bit more up than you think you you want um, because it's very difficult to mix it up um, while your paper's wet so you need to just get that on the go there ready and waiting don't make the purpley colour too strong. You want a bit of a bluey, ultramarine blue and a touch of Elysian crimson because it's not too strong. It's just a little hint of a colour in there. That's filthy colour. I'm going to take that out and start again because it's got some other colours mixed up with it and it looked awful. So just try again. So whenever you're mixing colours up and it's not gone right, don't try and just add more colours to that mix. Wipe it out and start again. It just... You've just got no chance if it's um, trying to, if it's gone wrong to start with. I'm just going to blow my nose on a piece of paper. That's not compulsory. You don't have to do that. It's just before it drips on the paper, which you didn't really need to know. But anyway, hey ho. We'll start doing the little bits here. I've got all my colours. I've got a bit of blue there ready and waiting. I've got a little bit of purpley colour. I've got a ooh, yellow ochre or oh, raw sienna. I didn't mix that one up. I want another little puddle of that somewhere on its own, not too strong. That should be okay there. So, right, now, when I'm doing a sunset, something like this, a sky or a sunset, there's always 101 different ways of doing skies. Um, in fact, one of the lessons, what I might do is two or three different skies for you in different ways so that we can see the difference when you're working through them. But for this one, because it's got the reflection, I tend to do a sunset with the sky and the water at the same time. So I'm wetting this paper all over. You can go backwards and forwards with it. So I wet all the paper. Some people, when they do skies, they leave little areas dry so they can get sharp edges to the white clouds. I find that quite difficult to do because I never see where I've got the water and where it's, where it's going to be wet and where it's going to be dry. So put that brush down. Biggish brush or nice big round brush. I tend to use these nylon ones rather than um, sables because I find sables a little uncontrollable for me. Um, so a little bit of the blue. We're just going to put a bit of the blue at the top because I can see some blue at the top there. 
just wiggle your brush around, load your brush with paint, wiggle your brush in, and this bottom edge will form a cloud shape, but it'll be nice and soft because the paper's wet. Bring that in. You've got to be fairly quick with this because otherwise the paper starts to dry out. So you can have that as blue patch as big as your small as you want it. Let's just have a little wiggly edge to that one there. And as I've got that on the brush, bring it down into the reflection. The reflection, anything you do with the reflection, keep in horizontal lines. Just keep them dashed. Horizontal means going across, not diagonally. It means straight across your picture there. So I'm just going to make that just a tad stronger down the bottom here. Just leave some little bits of white showing through as well. That will be the ripples eventually. So straight away now, swap to my next colour. Um, so I'm probably going to put the little bit of weak yellow ochre in, or raw sienna or something like that. And we're just going to pop that in. Oop, that is very strong. Let's just put a bit of water with that. Just not into the blue, but just leave a little bit of gap in between that so you can get a little hint of where the clouds are going to go um, and just leave a little bit of the gap so you've got a little bit of, don't be frightened of leaving white in there in some places I'm going to bring this a little bit further down so it goes into the background if you want this bright light for the sun part here leave the paper white so it will only look bright and white by the, the colours that you're putting around it now again we're going to put some horizontal lines into this water so just a few horizontal dashes into the water and here again it, it can leave pa pa paper without paint on if you want to um, let's put a bit of that purpley colour in in between these two to so give it a bit stronger and darker around here just a hint of cloud coming in while this is still nice and wet into these areas perhaps a bit more over there Let's make that a little bit stronger. This will all go to make this uh, make this look brighter down here. So just adding in a bit more colour into that. And again, while I've got that on the brush, where's it going to be reflected? Horizontal lines. If you notice the way I paint, clouds, soft, vaguely round movements, anything to do with the water, horizontal lines. So the, you can use your paintbrush backwards and forwards, push it into the background a little way. Let's add some nice stronger orangey reds into this now to give you a bit more depth into this background here. It's a little cloud shape, keep it soft. A little bit of orangey red. If it started to dry out, leave it alone and then come back. Re-wet it. Don't try and add water to it at this stage, otherwise you'll, this is where you get cauliflowers and things like that. And again, matching orangey red down between these boats. Just gently overlap those boats. We can rescue it a bit later on if we need to, but just adding the same colour in to its reflection down below here. So again, horizontal lines into the water. Now it's up to you of how strong you want to make this sunset or how subtle you want to make it. Um, I might just add a little bit more reddish colour around here. Again, making sure it... But the moment it starts to dry, leave it alone just add a little bit more reds around this bit leaving that bit bright and light down here adding a bit more color okay so i'm going to put my brush down because it is very tempting to keep going and going and going so i'm just going to put my brush down and dry it with a hair dryer that's now nice and dry um, so we're going to start from background foreground putting the background into this um, and if you look at the photograph, when you're there, it looks, there's a lot more colour into the background than you first think. So there's some bluey greys in here and some greeny, very dark greeny colours. So we're going to make some varying shades of a dark tone using um, blues and greys. So ultramarine blue and cadmium yellow, keeping it very bluey, um, gives you a, a dark greeny colour, bluey green colour. And then we want ultramarine blue and burnt umber. And we might just add a bit of those mixed together as well to give you the even darker tone. So ultramarine blue, burnt umber, that's... A lot of people just use Payne's Grey or something like that. But if you mix ultramarine blue and burnt umber, that virtually is Payne's Grey. And that means you can vary it as well as you go. So um, we're just going to start 
onto this background area here, just across this background, adding some bands of this colour. So I can see there's some greeny bits, you can just see the little bit of the estuary coming through and then some darker bits onto it as well. So with a strong dark bluey, bluey green colour, I'm just going to add in straight onto dry paper across this background some bits of the dark and you can add in you know, bits of other colour. I'm adding a little bit of blue into that mix as well. This time I'm avoiding the boats. I didn't avoid them last time, but I'm just avoiding the tops of the boats, except for the masts. I'm going straight over the masts. Um, just adding in some of these colours. Let's have a bit more of the greeny colour at the base of this one. On to dry paper, because it doesn't matter if there's a bit of texture showing through here. I'm painting this way, my hand this way around so you can see it, so I'm not covering it up, but I would normally turn the board round to get it to um, follow that line nice and neatly. I'm adding in the ultramarine blue burnt umber mix to make that even darker in some places. So you add patches and bands of that, just letting some of that show through somewhere along the line there. We need to just, as we're going with that, add a hint of the tree shapes. I'm just going to dibble the brush on top here. You could use a little bristly brush if you want to instead of the little ordinary plain one. We're just putting a little bit of variation into the height of the trees here. And then as you're bringing that down, just bring it in so it runs into that bottom of the, into the colour that you're putting on there. So they're not just sitting on top of the horizon, they're actually becoming part of the, the colouring that you've got there. So to adding in a little bit of shape, I've put a little bit of a greeny one in, then back to the bluey grey colour, just following those little lines around there. Just tidy that up. So it really doesn't matter if you keep building this up, as long as you think about it being like little fields and paths and things coming into the background there. So bring that across, perhaps we put another little hint of something there, but make sure the bottom comes into that um, bank that we've got there. So at the same time when you're doing that you're going to um, put some horizontal dashes into the water with the same sort of colours you've been using. I'm going to put some horizontal dashes, I'm just trying to think which way round to do it, I'm going to just be a little bit awkward, I'm going to have to use my, tilt my board a bit here, just putting some horizontal dashes. If you can in some places leave a little gap where, the, where it joins onto the bank but just bring those across Horizontal dashes, I'm swapping that brush because that brush is splitting and not doing the what it should be doing. So just get a bit more of the ultramarine blue burnt umber mix mixed up, ready and waiting. This doesn't matter so much because it's nice and because um, it goes onto dry paper anyway. So I'm just bringing some of these up, just again avoiding the boats at the moment, putting lots of dashes. And as they come away from this, they tend to break up and get less and less as they come away into the reflections away from the bank there. So we're just putting these on, just building this up onto dry paper. So whenever you want a, a crisp line, it's got to go onto dry paper. Just bringing that round hint of a, if you'd put a big tree in there, you'd have to have a reflection of a big tree down here. These you can always add to later, you can always put a bit more on. As this gets shallower, you, you'll get the, the depth of the reflection won't be so far down. So I'm just going to add in another little bank coming through here. So this can go over the top of the other one that we've already got there. Bring it down so it comes out perhaps behind that boat there. And this gives you that lovely little line there which will give you the hint of what's going on again. We can vary that colour, ultramarine blue, burnt umber mix perhaps into that. I've put a bit of yellow into that by mistake, but let's use that one as I've put my brush into it now. Gives me another bank coming up here, and then at the bottom of that it will go a lot darker because it, it's in shadow. So it will go darker towards its base, but it's only a little shallow bank, so you won't see much reflection from that one. Just a few bits where it comes out into the water there, perhaps. So while that bit's drying, before I start to work on the boats and things, I can keep going and do some more with this foreground or middle ground and then foreground. So again, I'm going to use the same sort of colours. 
a little bit of the green, the dark bluey green colour, keep that quite strong and dark. And put a little top to the bank coming down here. And then as it comes down to the water's edge, which is not very far down here, it goes a lot darker, ultramarine blue and burnt umber mix. And then it'll dash out into its reflection, which will be always slightly darker because it's the underside of things, it's a shadowy side. So dot it out into its reflection here. Little bits on the background. It's a grass there perhaps showing through. And there's always horizontal lines as it comes into the water. Little blurry lines there. Let's put a little post on there, make that a bit more browny. Little bit of a post and then dash out some of its reflections going the opposite way. Less and less as it comes away from it. Put a little rope on there if you want to. And then make sure that you just dot in a little bit for the reflection of it to give you that bit going back the other way there. The foreground needs a bit of um, work building up. So just onto this foreground it needs a bit more um, depth into it. So we'll start off with the colours that we've got there. Um, the ultramarine blue burnt umber. And this time we're just going to drag it across the surface. If you just drag it across the surface, it will just catch and just the tops of the bit of paper, especially if you've got rough watercolour paper. This is quite effective. It gives you um, a bit more texture into it. What you need to do, some people hold the brush with a hand on top, is keep your brush fairly dry. You probably need to practice this a bit first. If you put too big a blob on too soon, if it's too wet, you'll find that it, it just... It, you don't get any texture with it. And you have to build it up a little bit at a time, put a bit on, then go and do something else and then come back and um, build up a bit more with it. So I'll just put a little bit more onto that and then I'll leave it for a bit and then we'll come back and do a bit more onto it just to give you a bit more depth. Avoid my bit of masking tape I put right in the middle there. Now if I keep working that it'll just smooth out and you won't get any texture to it. So I'm just putting a little bit more on and then I'm going to leave it for a few minutes and do something else. So while that's drying, I can look at the boats. And again, when you start to look at these, the boats, they are um, quite light actually. They're not white, but they, where, the, where, the, um, where the white holes are and things like that, they, they are uh, very light. So we're going to do this in... A, in um, a couple of layers. We're going to put that pale blue colour on first. So if you've wobbled with the background, what you can do if you've gone over a little boat's hull or things like that, just wet it, rub it with a brush, dab it, and it'll just lift a little bit out. It won't lift it out completely, but just enough to lift out some of those bits. We're going to do this again where the masts go over in a minute. So while that's just there, I'm just going to get a bit of that weak cerulean blue and just put that over the holes of the top part here so it's it's paler than the background just to give my first layer onto that one it's not a bright blue but just have a look at the picture and see where you think it should be the lighter areas but it's just a little bit of a pale blue color to start with so a little bit of light onto it first perhaps a bit down the bottom there as well a dash or two into the water with that blue color a little bit more blue onto it. Dash or two into the water. It doesn't really make sense just at the moment, but it will do in a few moments when we come to put the last bits of the details on. It's. I have got um, a cheat sheet for this, which you're more than welcome to download and copy, but... Um, it's easier in many ways to actually draw it yourself because then you understand what the shapes of the boats are because it's this stage you start think I don't understand it looks rubbish so just while that bit's drying now we'll go back to put a few more bits onto this foreground because this should be dry enough to keep building this up drag your brush across here drag your brush across a bit more 
build up a bit more paint I'm just gonna mix up a bit more keep it a little bit varying in shade so it's not all one shade there start to fill in some of it so it gives it the stronger look down the bottom here let's mix up a bit more paint I'm trying not to lose the texture that I, I've got there I've got quite a smooth paper actually and, and not surface and it's it's not giving me an awful lot of texture to it so I'm having to be quite light with the touch there. You can always just dot it on so it looks like seaweed. Again, keep it horizontal as it comes out into that water. Just to give you a bit of the effect of the seaweed and the bits that are around there. This is a little place called Porlock, which is down, I think it's Somerset rather than North Devon, but it's down that way. It's a lovely little place which I go to from time to time. There's just so much to paint down there. You'll see it come up again and there's some little thatched cottages I want to do with you one of the days as well down there. Okay, so that's probably enough on the foreground there. Let's lose some of those little very white bits. Again, it can always come back and build up a bit more onto it. So back to the details on the boat now that part's dry. So we want to put in things like the holes and the masts and things like that. So if you look at this photograph again, the masts go from dark and then they look lighter as they go over the background here. So what I'm going to do with those, before I start getting the darks into it, I'm going to get a little brush, my little dinky brush, there should be one in here. That'll probably be small enough. Uh, all I'm going to do with those bits, let's just get a bit of clean tissue. I've just used my friend Hannah's, all her tissues have now gone because I've used them all. And all I'm going to do with this mast here, where it's going over the background, is to just get a thin brush, wet it, just rub it very gently, tab it with a tissue. It just lifts out enough of that mast to give it a bit of light in there. So it's quite a useful thing to do when you've got a little light to dark. I don't want to use white paint on it because it changes the nature of the, the painting system. So now I can go back in with my ultramarine blue burnt umber mix, start to put in the rest of the shapes of these boats, the little bit of the hole down here and its reflection. Just put that shape in. And I want to put in a little window or two to make it look like it's um, and again a dash or two into the water although you won't see much of that you can put in any fiddly details which you make think make shows up better I have to stop it looking like eyes nose and a mouth that's the only slight problem with doing those so perhaps I'll put a bit more onto the top of the boat there again same with this one all I'm going to do is put in the bottom part of the hole here in a nice strong dark and again, dash it straight into its reflection. Think of the shape at the end here. It's probably got a little rudder on the back. Goes around the back here. Again, now dash that into its reflection down the bottom here. Dash a two down there. And again, just something, perhaps the line of the top of the boat there. Perhaps a little window or a little bit darker onto that. Um, something else at the back end there to bring that back end out. Last little boat, does have a little white line at the bottom of this one so I'm just bringing that up. It'd be quite nice to sit there on site and do this but you usually find that the lighting changes so quickly or the tide comes in and out or a cloud comes over and it changes all your lighting that it's quite difficult to do these out on location like this. So photographs can be very useful. But then photographs, you can't see all the detail into the background. So it's a bit of both really. You try and have a quick observational skills and then try and work from those if you can. The photos, thinking about what was there and trying to simplify the picture, as I said, so it doesn't make it too complicated nearly there we just want to put some masks on and a bit of rigging now it's up to you whether you want to do this with a brush but if um, you can do it with a brush 
but perhaps just a rather than using a, a pencil because that will look shiny but a coloured pencil um, a black or a grey or something makes life a little easier if you sharpen it but I'm just going to brave it with a a brush whoops a bit of a mobbly mast a few little bits coming out there and if you are doing it don't if you're putting ropes and things on don't do solid lines just a flick and let the eye do the the rest just put a flick down and leave it at that if you try and put all the the ropes and everything on it gets too busy it's good just gets too much a little bit of dark at the bottom of that and then just dot down into the water perhaps a little wiggle and again just a little dashes don't whoop, don't do that as i've just done and do an upright line it just doesn't look right completely with this so again with this one try to look at where you're going to rather than where you're actually painting it helps to give you a straighter line and say with the ropes and things just a flick down rather than try to join it up you just want a few little bits in the direction of rather than trying to make it too solid and then as you come down here you're just going to make it make sure if you're going that way your reflections go in the opposite way so it does look like a little reflection there and last one and then oops make that come from the bottom of the mast little half flick half flick half flick down there but then these have got a dot make sure it's directly underlined and make sure it's going in the right way with that and again it's a little dot or two so you've got other things coming out from behind it. Um, what else can we do? We can put in, you know, like perhaps the odd dash of the same colour to give you a few more reflections down here. So with perhaps the weak purpley colour we had before, we can put in an extra ripple or two. If you haven't got many ripples in here, then just add in one or two just weak ones with the same colours that you had before, just to give it a bit of interest right down the bottom here. Now I've done that, I don't like it, but hey-ho, we'll keep going. A bit more of the blue on there. Just some little short dashes, just break it up a bit so it's not like a mirror down the bottom there completely. Weaken that down so it's a hint of that colour. I'm just going to dab it with a tissue to make it a little bit softer because it was a bit strong. Perhaps the odd seagull, you can put something up here, perhaps a little seagull or two. And that's it.